Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Today we're going to tackle one of the Shield Maidens from Bad Squido Games, which, as well as being really fun to say, is an ace company. They produce realistic female miniatures, which are a little less on the pinup side, as you can see here. Pretty cool stuff, and I really like having the options for things like uh, Saga, they do Russians for World War II games, um, sci-fi and fantasy stuff. There's a big... There's a big selection. Go check them out. I'll drop a link in the old box below. So what we're going to do is some pretty basic stuff, really. As you can see, she's not particularly carefully highlighted. It's all a little bit more on the stylistic side of things. So what I'm going to cover today is really more in the style of how you can do this your own way. All right. I know that sounds a little confusing when I put it like that. <laughs> the colors are not so important as, as the technique. So we'll get into that now. And have a look at what I'm going to do. Now I've started off with giving her a primer of Army Painter Skeleton Bone. And you can see that's quite a nice just off beige colour. Now you could use any brown that you wanted. You could go to a darker brown. You could even use a skin colour or something like that. And I know some people like to use different coloured primers for every three or four miniatures in a warband. Because they want a slight mix of colours in sort of the, the base of what they're using. Which is cool. Now I'm using Skeleton Bone because this underskirt that she's wearing, or undershirt I suppose, uh, I'm going to leave it in this Skeleton Bone. I want it to be a sort of a raw linen appearance. And that's the colour I'm going to use for that. Uh, you could, like I said, anything else might work here. A brown, uh, which you can then layer over the top of. But I like working from a slightly lighter coat. And you'll see why when we get to that. Now leaving her shield separate means that I've sprayed that with fur brown. And I'm going to use that because I don't want to muck around trying to paint the leather rim of the thing. So it's brown, and when I stick it to her, I can just paint the inside of the shield much, much easier than having to painstakingly paint brown around the edges. Now when it comes to actually painting her, I'm going to talk about the colors that I'm using, but I'm not going to list them because what specific colors I'm using isn't really important. Uh, the... The Dark Ages, so to speak, and this is a term that is uh, falling out of favor, though I don't know what the replacement <laughs> is at the moment. Uh, the misconception is that everything was quite drab, but, and I mean, I was guilty of this too. I thought there was a, a handful of colors and that was it. But it turns out natural dyes were fairly plentiful. So red, green, yellow, blue, all of these things are going to be fairly common. And because of the ease of dyeing, you know, plain linen, plain wool, colors would have been much brighter than we would have expected. So I'm, you know, I really enjoyed doing my research on this. So that's why I'm not going to list the colors. I think you guys, you know, have some fun and look into what you can use because we aren't painting a uniform. It's whatever you want. And I recommend have some fun. But we are going to start out first of all, and I'm going to paint her skin, which might seem a little weird to how I normally do it, but we're going to paint out, uh, especially around her hair and her jacket here. Uh, it's going to be a little bit easier. So I've got here Army Painter Tanned Flesh. Like I said, I paint skin differently in every video. <laughs> Let's do the same here. So like always, adding just a little bit of water into the paint to make sure it flows properly. And we're just going to paint this straight onto her skin. Uh, don't worry too much if you do get close to hair or jacket or whatever because we are going to paint over those but what's important is a nice smooth and solid color for the base coat on her skin so if you need to you can come back and do a second thin coat of this uh, anywhere that you want to leave like i mentioned i'm going to leave this uh this raw linen just be careful when you come to the edge of that but otherwise go nuts then we're going to paint on her hair now I'm going to use, this is Citadel Zandri Dust, because I want to do kind of a blondy color, sandy blonde. Yeah, this is exactly as complicated as you'd imagine. A little bit of water, like always. And again, you can paint onto her clothing, it doesn't really matter. Just watch out for where you've already painted that skin. But if you do go over it, don't worry, you're just doing base coats, you can cover it up again, no problem. And then we can move on, we'll do her overskirt her jacket I guess 
I really need to figure out the actual names for these things. <laughs> I'm going to use the Fang, and this will seem quite drab going on, particularly compared to some of the other colors that we have used already. But there is a method to this madness. We're going to brighten this up a little bit later on. So just go around now and take your time when you get close to any hair or anywhere that you want to stay the same color and you might find two thin coats is necessary. Now after a couple of coats of that I've got here some Avalanche Sunset and I'm going to use this just to paint a trim on the dress itself. Now you could do this in a more plain color like a linen sort of thing but apparently lining the edges of these jackets was ugh, jackets dresses come on i gotta find the right word <laughs> it was pretty common so that there was a little bit of uh, decoration on these now don't worry if your line is not straight because what you can do is go back to your base coat and paint some more blue or red or whatever over the top of it again so i'm just going to go around Oops, just a couple of millimeters from the base of her skirt there. And we'll do a little around the collar as well. Now I've made a real pig's error that in some places, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. What I did was carried on, made sure that my yellow was nice and strong, and now I'm just going to go back with my base coat, and a little bit more carefully this time, because it covers easier, I'm going to straighten this out and it'll look nice. Now I've got some Vallejo Settled Brown and we're going to paint in all of the leather areas. Now I really like Settled Brown, it's just, it's going to dry just right. So her knife sheath, uh, her belt, even the handle of her, her knife, you know, paint this in at the same time. And just take your time as well with the straps on her legs, you can also paint these in in the same leather. Now we're finally going to pay some attention to the shield. So I flipped it over and this is the rear side. We're not going to see much of this. I've got Steel Legion Drab and all I'm going to do is very quickly just blast that in for the, the unpainted wooden planks on one side. And I'm also going to paint her uh, spear in this Oops, at the same time. Uh, once this is dry, you can just put it aside. Don't worry too much about that. Now once we've got the back of the shield painted, and the spear if you happen to have one, what we're going to do now is actually glue it to the miniature. So I've got my super glue, and we're just going to do a little dot of it in the set, and it's not going to work. Alright, two six. So we punch a hole through the crusty top of our old super glue, him, and then just a little dab of that in there. And make sure that you've got the, the bar through there running up and down, because that's actually the grip. So let's just go ahead and jam that on there and then give that a couple of seconds to dry. There we go, sorted. Now she's got her shield. Now, now that she's holding it for us, <laughs> we can actually paint that shield a little bit easier. Now there are all sorts of schools of thought on how these shields should have been painted. Uh, there were laws covering certain things. It was, it was bonkers, all right? Uh, I'm gonna stick to what suggests as a fairly historical uh, sort of look. So I've got here, this is flat red from Vallejo. And I'm going to start off just by painting the entire interior, uh, not worrying too much if I hit the shield boss. Now you might have, or you might have access to, some uh, shield decals or transfers, in which case paint to this stage and then we would do everything else and you would use the decal as a, a sort of finishing step, a last stage. I don't have any, so I'm going to have to paint my shield. Now red and black was apparently a fairly common combination, and I'm going to use the rivets. You'll see there's the well, nails in the shield boss, and they do correspond roughly with positions of the nails in the outside of the shield. So if I dot just a little blip, a little black there, and I mark it off against that nail, then I can paint a quick careful line in there we go and do that the same where's the next dip dip like so fill in this black area and i'll do the opposite side of the shield and we'll have a very simple pattern but one that would have been fairly common and it's nice and easy to paint 
Now while those layers are drying, we can get on and get near the finish of these base coats. I've got here, this is Lead Belcher from Citadel, but you can use any sort of iron color that you want. Where we'll start off is we'll paint in the top of her spear, and as well, these little rings on her uh, knife sheath. These would have been uh, normally a metal. Uh, if she were particularly rich, they might have been bronze. But we'll just quickly dab those in with a little bit of steel. If you're feeling fancy, you can dot in every single one of these uh, nails around the outside of the shield. That'll probably take a little bit of time. And don't forget to do the shield boss itself. This really is one part that should be metal. Same too with the iron band. If you can reach it, uh, just get in there. Quick line of metal. But don't worry if you're going to get too close to something. It will be very rarely seen. Now there is one last detail to paint in, which I very nearly forgot. And I always forget. <laughs> and that is her shoes. Now these would probably have been leather. So I've got here, this is red leather, and it's quite bright going on. But once we've shaded over the top of it, it's going to look fairly good. So don't worry if you hit the base or anything like that. Just go over now. And these last couple of details, ah, finally. Now, if you've had any oops moments with your uh, base coats and you want to cover over, over the linen, sorry, linen again, uh, Ushabti Bone is a good color match for that. Now comes the messy part. We're going to dip her using Quick Shade Strong Tone. Now, this stuff is kind of like a varnish and shade in one. It's going to be shiny as, and it looks monstrous going on. I have done a whole video on the dip before, but we'll cover the, the basics of it here. When you've got this stuff, it works best if you bring it up to room temperature first. So I've just popped mine near the radiator. It's freezing at the moment. So we'll bring that up so it's a little bit more fluid. And this will only rinse off your brushes if you're using something suitable for enamels. So I've got a little bit of white spirit in here. Now do grab yourself an old brush or one that you don't mind demolishing because this stuff will very quickly just destroy your brushes. So use cheap brushes, okay? Now when it comes time to mix this up, don't shake it. If you shake it, you're gonna introduce uh, air bubbles and that'll actually make it a little bit more difficult to put on. You won't get as, as smooth a result. So carefully lift that off and grab yourself one of my old brushes. Any old stick will do. And I'll give this a mix up until it's nice and that oily color is off the top. Now that doesn't take long to stir up, probably about 30 seconds, just making sure that you are scrubbing around off the bottom to make sure that you're dredging all of the good stuff off the bottom of the can. Now this, like I said, this is gonna look awful going on, but grab your old brush and just coat the whole miniature, the same as you would if you were doing uh, Agrax Earth Shade, okay? Cover over the whole thing in this strong tone. Now anywhere that it really, really strongly collects, while you've still got it wet, uh, move it around a little bit. You want it to be fairly similar to a shade sort of coverage. So anywhere that there's too much, feel free to get in there and save the day. But let's just go around. Oh, this part always gives me the willies. No matter how many times I do it, <laughs> I'm dead concerned this is gonna look terrible. Uh, but just go around now. I'll show you what that looks like when it's finished. Now that's... <laughs> you would be forgiven for thinking that you just ruined a paint job. Um, wow, it is glunky, it is shiny, uh, and as it's going on, you know, it's... Ooh, ooh, it is not encouraging. But I promise you, okay guys, keep the faith on this. Uh, for metal miniatures, that you want to put on a gaming table that are going to see a lot of use, you can't go wrong with the dip. All right, this protects them and it shades them. I love this stuff, even though, oh, keep the faith, okay? I, I joke about it normally, but this time you really got to trust me. Now this needs to set and cure because it's, it's like a furniture polish, essentially. It needs to go completely hard. Now, this is a process that Army Painter, they suggest leave it for 24 to 48 hours. To which I say, no, leave it the full 48. Don't touch it 
until your certainness is cured. If you've got somewhere like a near a radiator or an old airing cupboard or something like that, which is warm and dry, keep them in there. Okay, put this up and let it dry undisturbed somewhere dry and a little warm. So normally where I turn around and say, all right, half an hour has passed and our miniatures dry. I'm going to see you guys in two days. And then with the power of television, you will have had two days pass in perfect ease. And this is what you'll have. You'll notice she is a little less shiny than when it first went on. And it has flowed into the recesses and given us this cool all over shading effect. There is one area here on the front, uh, you might be able to see, where I've actually just put too much on. And it's all collected and, you know, one look at how this can go a little bit awry if you're not careful. Now because she's going to be one in a unit of eight out of a warband of like 40 miniatures, I'm not too worried. But you could go back over here with a little of the base coat and then, you know, layer it up just to fix it in with the rest of the areas. But for what we're doing, I don't think this matters too much. Now what we're going to do is to bring that shine off. We want to we want to dull that down so she doesn't look quite so game piece. And for that you can use any matte varnish that you like. You can brush it on or you can use a spray. Uh, if you are going to use a brush for this, I do recommend Vallejo's matte acrylic varnish. It's pretty good. Uh, it won't give you a perfect matte finish, but it will bring this down very nicely. And it will still look nice and sturdy on the table. I'm going to use Army Painter's own anti-shine matte spray. Now this can go a little awry sometimes uh, because you know the weather conditions that I'm in at the moment aren't perfect. So I'm going to give her a couple of very careful sprays and we'll see what we get once that's dulled down. And with that applied, what a big difference it makes. You can see how it's brought down the shine very effectively, particularly on that shield, but left all of our shading intact. Now the cool thing with this too is that your miniature is now essentially under two layers of varnish. <laughs> so you can... I don't want to say you can be rough with them, but if these happen to get knocked around a little on the table, you're not going to chip any of your hard work. So this is one of the reasons I really like that quick shade dip for metal miniatures. It keeps them nice and safe. Now from here, it's up to you what you'd like to do. Uh, you could base her up and put her on the table like this, but of course we can do a little bit more. So we'll start off with, I'm going to grab Tyrant Skull, which is this one here. You can use any paint for this. It doesn't have to be a dry paint. And I'm just going to very lightly dry brush the edges of her hair just to get a little bit more kind of depth and life into that. So with just one of my little dry brushes, very lightly dragging along the high points of her hair. We'll just get a bit of contrast there. That looks pretty nice. Be careful when you're getting around to like the front of her face. Don't worry too much on her skin because we can actually highlight you know, if we make a mistake and we end up covering that with a little bit of Tyrant Skull, we can highlight it away later. Now, speaking of her face, I've got some Cadian Flesh Tone, and we'll highlight that now. So all you're doing is going over most of the areas of skin. You'll see how that uh, Barbarian Flesh or Tanned Flesh, whichever you're using, is a really good base coat for this. But just avoid the recesses of her face. And... To the backs of her hands and everything as well. And from there, if you want to go even higher, I've got here, this is basic skin tone from Vallejo. You could use Kislev Flesh or whatever flesh set you've got. But we're just going to do some very light edges along the tip of her nose, just along her brow, and we'll do her cheekbones and... Yeah, that'll be about it, really. <laughs> Now let's do something I've never actually shown you before, and that's how I paint eyes. Now I don't tend to like doing this, because <laughs> if there's a part where I'm going to mess up, here's where it is. But let's not worry too much. I start off, I grab some black and water it down just a little bit more than you normally would, because I really want it to flow off the brush easily here. Then all we're going to do, and this is kind of difficult for me to do on camera, so I'm going to hold her at a funny angle here is block in the whole eye socket in black. Now these uh, shield maidens have really pronounced eyes, which makes this actually a lot easier than on other miniatures. So we'll block those in in black. Now I've filled in the sockets and you can probably see on her on her left eye, I have made a little mistake. I've gone a bit into the uh, the cheek itself. 
But we're not going to worry about that because I can fix that up. I'm going to use the base color for her skin just to fill in around the bottom of her eye socket and make that look a little tidier. Now what I'm going to do next, I'm not going to do on camera because I will never get it. <laughs> I'll never get it with this in the way. But just paint a small straight line of white across the eye, but leaving some of the black just in the very recesses. And you'll see by leaving that little bit of black around the edges, we're going to avoid that really wide-eyed staring effect that you can get with some eyes. Now go back to your black, and again, this is what I'm going to do without the camera in the way, but just thin it out and you're going to paint a tiny wee dot of black in the center of the eye. Now I recommend you do not want much paint on your brush at all for this, uh, and you can even practice on your palette just making little itty bitty dots so you can see what you're going to leave behind on your miniature, okay? Take this one slow, guys. Now she's got a little bit of the crazy eye just because of the lighting from this angle, but let me tell you, from, from my perspective, she looks pretty good. <laughs> this is one that takes a little bit of practice and you will need to fix things up. Um, especially, I mean, I, I've been doing this for years and I still struggle with painting eyes. So take your time is the important thing. Make sure your paints are thinned out and have a little bit of practice on your palette, okay? What I'm gonna do now is fill in those little areas around the base of her eye socket and just tidy those up with a little bit of uh, tan flesh. Now, big breath of relief, now that we've got that done, we can get on to painting some of the easy stuff again. Hooray. So I've got a Latok blue here. And like I said, you can use any color that you're using uh, to highlight, you know, you might have a red skirt or whatever, it doesn't matter. But I'm just gonna now pick some high points on the skirt and just brighten them up a little bit. You want to try and follow the natural shading that's left behind uh, by your quick shade or whatever you're using for that. And make sure you're leaving some of the darker blue just to give you that nice shift in color. As always, you hear me, I'm concentrating, I'm whispering. <laughs> now you'll see I've not gone for a crazy high contrast, uh, but I really like how that blue turns out. It's a nice rich one. What we can do now is exactly the same with the yellow. So again, this is just going over with a brighter version of the color we used earlier. I've got aerial yellow, and I'm gonna be a little bit more careful about putting this on this time. And then finally, we'll do the same thing with some Ushapti bone and her underskirt. Now I'm not gonna do this on her uh, leg wraps because frankly, it's not gonna matter, but just a little bit of a little bit of lightness there is really going to help this uh, shading stand out all that bit more. Then finally, I have just a little iron breaker and I'm just going to brighten up some of these metal areas. I don't want to go too high uh, because this is still, you know, forged iron. But just enough to make some of those bits shine a little and look a bit nicer. Now that's done. <laughs> Uh, I'm actually not going to do any more highlighting on this miniature. Uh, it's up to you if you would like to carry on and make them, you know, look a little nicer. But the reason why I'm stopping here is that this is where I'm quite happy to put her on the table. You could use a light gray or even a, a mid-tone gray here to do some stripes in the shield. You could use a decal, whatever it is you've got. But from here, I'm quite happy to base her up and put her in my army. I don't want to go too far on something <laughs> I'm going to use myself. So let's get a quick look at what she'll look like when she's, you know, finished. There we have it guys, with her base done, she's ready to rock and roll. Hit the table and splatter some Saxons, I guess. <laughs> now I did end up getting my little itty bitty dry brush and doing just a little bit in the center of these areas of color on the shield. In retrospect, I would probably do it for the rest of them too. That does look quite nice. So what I'm gonna do now, get some photos of her. And uh, yeah, this was a lot of fun to do. A little bit of a departure from my normal style and, you know, just to demonstrate that there are other ways you can do things. So shout out again to Bad Squiddo Games. Annie over there runs an amazing business. You definitely want to go pick up some of her toys, okay? Help feed the guinea pigs. So as ever, you can drop a comment in the old box below, get in touch on my Facebook or Twitter, which are both linked down there too. So thank you very much for your time. You guys enjoy the rest of your day.